Okay, sorry, always something happening on the farm. Okay, so leading coefficient test again, 2x cubed and then a bunch of other crap. And so because that's 2x cubed, it means that our graph is going to look like x cubed, which means on this side we're going down, on that side we're going up. So it's going to have that squiggle form of our base graph. Now in the middle it's got other squiggles going on, but at least it has, a, we know that the shape of it, what it's gonna look like, and that comes from that leading coefficient. Okay, then the last thing we have is the y-intercept. So this is where we're gonna plug in zero for x. So we have y equals two times zero plus one squared zero minus three. I mean, I guess it's not horrible, but it's kind of ugly looking. So those guys go away. And we're gonna have one squared, which is just one times negative three. So the y-intercept is going to be negative three. Okay, so we can put that guy on here too. Negative. All right. So now, if we're going from left to right, we know we're coming from below because we know the shape of the endpoints. And then we're going up to negative one half, but we're not gonna cross through, we're gonna bounce. So we come up, come up, we bounce, and we turn around, and now where are we headed? We're headed down here, come through our y-intercept, and now where do we have to get to? We gotta get back up here. Now we're gonna cross through there, because it was only one time, so we cross through, and eventually our arrow meets up. Now, I don't really know where this bottom point is, okay, I don't really know, so it is still a sketch, but at least I know that it's got these two bumps. It probably does not look like that because that's kind of ugly looking. But at least I know it's got these two bumps going, going on in it. So we've got, now we've got a better idea of what this graph looks like. Not perfect. If you want it to be more perfect, we could start plugging in a couple more points. So we can, I'm not gonna require you to, but if we really wanted to have some idea of what's happening in this region, let's just let X equal one for a minute. So we'll go y equals, equal, let me turn my equals, two plus one squared, and then two minus three. Okay, so that's going to be, not two, one minus three, sorry. So that's gonna be three squared, so that's nine times negative two. So, ooh, okay, so y is negative 18. So I was a little bit wrong in how far down it went. It's actually going like way far down. So at one, we're way down here as we come back up, okay? Okay, so you can get a little bit more information if you plug in just some extra points. Again, like I said, it's just really the shape, but we want the leading coefficient test, the y-intercepts and the x-intercepts. Okay, so let's do another one. We'll just do two more and then we'll be done. Okay, so the next one I'm going to give you is written out in regular polynomial form, not in the factored form. So this one says y equals x to the fourth minus 200x squared plus 10,000. Okay. So doesn't matter what order you do the steps in. If we do the leading coefficient test first, because it's an x to the fourth, okay, it's gonna look more like a parabola. And is it a, it's a parabola going up, right? Not down, but going up. So we can we have this idea that it's gonna look something like that. And we can just we can just draw that. That's our idea. Arrows both going up. Now in this form, the y-intercept is also super easy to find because you just put in zero here and then the constant term just pops out as 10,000. Now, obviously a bit on the huge side, but still doable, okay? And then comes the x-intercepts. And this is where we could use our p's and q's um, and we could um, do synthetic division and the whole thing. But what I want you to notice is as you work through the P's, 
Remember where P is coming from? Out here, right? All right, well, let's see what goes into 10,000. One, two, four, five. Are you getting where I'm going with this? Okay, so if this is the case and you get caught on one of these, pretty good bet it's either going to, it's going to be a nice number. So it might be one, or when you look at the size of these numbers, okay, another one that we might see might be 100 or 500 is in here. Okay, so if you've got something horrible like this, start with one, 100, 500, don't go for the middle, you know, I go with 10, try 10, but don't go with the, the, um, like five or 12 or things like that. Go with the kind of the whole numbers, but we can actually do something even better here. So I wanna show you another trick that we can use, but in this, only in this special occasion. This is not a quadratic, but does it have the form of a quadratic? So if you just glanced up here and didn't really look at the exponents, would you say, oh look, there's a quadratic. It's a fourth and a squared rather than a second and a first, but it still has that quadratic form. So guess what we can do? We can factor it. Instead of putting x in the front of each one, we're gonna have to put x squared. Now it's still ugly because of the 10,000, but think about this. We need two numbers, two nice numbers that multiply to be 10,000. Four zeros, if you split that in half, would be 100 and 100. Does that give us a 200 in the middle? So we put 100 here and 100 here, and they'll both be minuses, won't they? Now we have x squared minus 100 equals zero which means x squared equals 100, yeah, positive 100. So what does x equal? Plus or minus 10. And then what's x gonna equal over here? Okay. So as we look at our list, we go one, we maybe tried 100, we maybe tried 500. I said, wait a minute, 10's a nice number. We, oh, look, it happened to be 10. Okay. so. Another way just to make your life a little bit easier if you have that special form, but it only works in that special form. But now we have everything we need to draw the graph. This is one of my favorite graphs. I'll show you why in a minute. As we graph it, hopefully you will see. Big graph. Okay, we know we've got arrows going up and going up like a parabola, right? But something weird is happening in the middle. It also says it has a y-intercept at 10,000. I am not going to scale. We'll say that's 10,000. Give it a little label if you're not going to be to scale, okay? And then we've got x-intercepts at plus or minus 10. So let's say that this is negative 10 and this is positive 10. But be very careful. How many times is positive 10 an answer? So 10 has mult 2, doesn't it? One here and one there. And negative 10 also has mult 2. So are these guys crossing through or bouncing off? They're bouncing off, aren't they? So we know we're coming down from the top. We're coming down to negative 10 and we're bouncing off and we're headed up to 10,000 and we're bouncing off 10,000 because we got to get back down to 10. So we got bounces going on here. And it's a W for woods. So this is my graph. All right, now you got it. Okay. okay, so that one we had to do a little bit more work on. Let's do one more and then we can be done with this. What do I got? So last one I've got oops, is P of 
x equals negative x plus 5 squared times x minus 3 to the fourth. Now remember that this one is set up nicely for the x-intercepts. So the x-intercept here, we're gonna have x equals negative five from there, and we're gonna have x equals positive three from here. But multiplicity is important. So this guy is mult, how many of them are there? Two, and that one is mult. Four. So on both of them, are we bouncing or crossing? Okay. We're bouncing, aren't we? Bounce. All right. Now, y-intercept, we can plug zero in for x. Don't forget this negative sign. So we have zero plus five squared times zero minus three to the fourth. So we have a negative, and there we have 25. Ugh. And over here we have three to the fourth, or negative three to the fourth, but it's gonna become positive, which is 81. That's fantastic. And again, my battery has, my batteries are dead, so I'll do 25 times 81. So five, two, zero, 40. All right, so the answer here is negative 2,025. Okay, again, obviously we are not going to be the scale. Okay. So we'll get rid of this just so we don't need to see the scratch work anymore. Okay, and then leading coefficient test. Now remember, this is the one where the leading coefficient test, we have to kind of build it ourselves. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is that we have to also include the negative. So there's a negative, then there's an x squared, and then there's an x to the fourth. So this is giving us a negative x to the sixth. Now six is even, and even says parabola, but the negative says flip it upside down. So our graph is gonna look something like that. So let's see what we come up with this time. The nice thing about the W was that it was symmetrical because it had that plus or minus 10. This one is not gonna have symmetry going on. Okay, so we're over at negative five. One, two, three, four, five. We're over at positive three. One, we are down at negative 2,025. And then we know it looks like an upside down, so the arrows are pointing down. Now, obviously, there's something going on in the middle. So if you're still like, I don't really know what's going on, and I want to be a little bit more precise, this might be a good number to try. Negative 1. So if we let x equal negative 1, this can kind of just give us a judge as to what's happening. p of negative 1 means we'll have negative 1 plus 5 squared, 1 minus 3 to the fourth. So 6 squared, so we have a negative. 6 squared is 36. It's getting worse. And 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And negative 2 to the 4th is positive 16. Crap. So over here, 36 times 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 0, 36. So 6, 7, 5. Okay, so 576, but it's negative. So we know in here we're somewhere like that ish. Okay, so we're coming down then. All right, so we start. Are we bouncing or crossing? Bouncing. We know we're coming down here. We don't really know what's going on there. And then bouncing or crossing? Bouncing back down. Okay, pretty bad. Pretty bad. Okay. But it gives us an idea of what the graph looks like. Not perfect, 
it definitely gives us an idea. Okay. So that's what we're doing. Okay, so then I think we can be done with 3.1. Okay, so that's the graphing that they want you to do. Again, a little bit more precise than the just sketching we were doing earlier, but certainly not like it has to be fancy or anything. Okay, so you need to know that leading coefficient test and then the multiplicity about the bouncing or crossing. That's, that's really what we're new that we're learning here. Okay, everybody, have a great day. I will see you next time.